look at those lips. <laughs> um, so what is this? Um, so it, it looks like a younger <laughs> person's face. So you might be forgiven for thinking this is in pitigo, which is a bacterial infection that we met earlier on. But actually, this is a viral infection. I think this is herpes simplex. Uh, so herpes infection type one, which commonly affects the the face. You, there's another version of that herpes simplex type two, which tends to cause genital herpes. They're the same virus, just different types. Yeah. Well, I think straight away when I when I think herpes, I'm thinking STI. Yeah. Right. So so obviously you know there's a lot of opinions about Brazilian jiu jitsu, but certainly uh, on the mat you don't see too much of uh, <laughs> too much sexual activity, no eye contact. Um, but is this typically this, the, the thing that you would see? like on the mats so type so. type a absolutely this yeah. is like the ringworm and the impa tiger we've talked about before this is another one that spreads like wildfire oh, with yeah. direct you know close body contact yeah. because the virus the the each of these so to describe what we're seeing it's uh, little sores, small red bumps and open areas that we call vesicles and little blisters that then open and they get wet and there's this kind of pus filled fluid inside of them. So it, like the impa tiger, it's, it's wet, it's, uh, it, it, it's manky looking and it often forms around the face or the lips. Um, and each of those little fluid filled blisters contains millions of little tiny virions, which are these viruses and viruses are absolutely tiny and, and they are very good at spreading from close direct skin to skin contact. And they're, the term for this is often herpes gladiatorium, which just describes, goes back to the Roman empire from gladiators who used to transmit this between each other. And then in the world of rugby, it's called scrum pox from forwards that are in, you know, they're in a rock mall or a, a scrum and they're, they're rubbing faces against each other. And then this just spreads like wildfire because of that direct contact, because those virus particles are just jumping from one per person's skin to the next. Yeah. Okay. And do you, does that have to be face to face contact or can it be any body contact? Any body part. You, this is most common in the head, neck and face, but yeah. it can occur anywhere else in the body. Yeah. Well. I mean, if, so if, if you're, if you're rolling with somebody and they've got this on their mouth, um, but I don't know, you're on their leg. Like, yeah. is that, is that, a, is that a concern or is it, is it really yeah. just a any part of your body that gets in contact with an active infection like this is at risk. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, if, if you're not going near to so the actual infection itself, which is on the mouth, if yes. you're not near that, yeah. you're on the rest of the body, it, it, you know, is that whole body infectious is what I'm asking? No, not really. No, it, it needs to be direct contact with the infected area. Yeah. Basically you need to touch it. Yeah. Yeah. Or the, the other thing, just to be clear, is, is what we call fomite spread. I'm going to explain what that is. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, so fomites are, so these viruses, they can live for quite a long time. And this is the same for the bacteria and the fungi as well. If you're training and you rub your face with a towel and you leave that on the floor and then someone else picks that up, the virus is transmitted to that towel. It lives on that surface. And then the next person that has contact with that will then transmit that that to them to themselves so that's what's called fomites it's it's about touch points uh and we'll come on to this in the second part uh but yeah you could have a shared contact surface or item that would then transmit that from one person to another without them actually ever being in direct contact with one another mm, okay um i'm gonna show you one more picture because this potentially the same thing but looks a little, little bit different um so has this chap just been in the desert for too long or is this, <laughs> is this the same thing? Yeah, yeah, I think it's, the same. Yeah, he has got quite dry lips, hasn't he, anyway, but. He's a chapstick, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. A bit of Carmex, fine. <laughs> um, but I tell you, what's fascinating about herpes virus is once you've got it for the first time, most people in adulthood have been exposed at some point. Is this virus, even if you treat it, and the main treatment for this is acyclovir, which is an antiviral. It's, you can give it by cream or by tablets. It never goes away. Unlike tinea, which it, usually it's case closed, the virus shrinks, it retreats back into your body and it lives just next to your spinal cord in a place called your dorsal root ganglion. Okay, and then when, when you feel a bit ill, you're a bit under the weather, a bit tired, a bit run down, it come, it, that's when it re-emerges and it, it almost grows back out along your nerves and, and, and then recrudesces, is the technical term, reappears on your skin again. And that's how herpes 
never really goes away. It can always come back to haunt you in the future. And you can get some unfortunate souls who just have recurrence of herpes. They've had it once and then it just comes back and they might need frequent retreatment. That's a real pain and in the ass. And some people are even unlucky enough to be on preventative acyclovir, so tablets that prevent them from having these recurrent outbreaks. And um, yeah. you said there was like type A, type, a, type B. So type, type, type A was the mouth, type B was the genitals. Type 1 and type 2. Sorry, my yep. bad. Um, Every day is a school day. It is. Um, so if you've got one, like, is that just, is that, you know, sort of different to the other or could they one transfer or sort of like transform into the other? Uh, if, uh, well, it's, it's not a, a hard and fast rule. You can see type two herpes simplex presenting in the, the face and type one in the genitals. But usually if you're someone that has contracted genital herpes, it, it, it's not the case that that's then likely to then transform into then herpes around the mouth that usually those different subtypes will stick within their their usual zone if that okay. makes sense <laughs> all right fine yeah. so but what I'm, the key, key message really is if you're someone that gets cold sores which is what this is commonly known as around the mouth herpes simplex you're, you're not then likely to then get an outbreak around your your genitals uh, it's usually stick stays where it is so fortunately. St stop stop sucking people off mate all right thanks <laughs> mate <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay fine yeah. um just 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 to um, close out the I guess the, the return to playing time off the mats is it is it similar to like the fungal infection so you you get the cream or the anti what is it antibiotics or antiviral antiviral cream. antiviral cream yeah, all tablets yeah depending. yeah so you've got that um, and then you know what what is that period of time that you should maybe stay off the mats and what's interesting is there's a key difference here between cold sores or herpes simplex or herpes gladiatorum whatever you want to call it and the other, the previous two infections we, we talked about, when they are quite responsive, so the bacterial and the fungal infections, the ringworm and the impetigo, once they're on, that, that individual's on treatment, we said two to three days. The, because this is a virus, and I said those virus particles, they're very tiny, they're very successful at spreading, this actually remains infectious for a lot longer. And the current guidance is you need, they, they need to be two weeks uh, on uh, they have been treated for two weeks um, and that needs to have ideally almost be fully resolved before they can return to play because it, it's it's infectious for a much longer period.